Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Thursday and our Mind the Moment community. So nice to have everybody here this morning and to see you joining. Yeah. All right, well, we will get started. So officially, good morning and welcome to our Mind the Moments Thursday morning gathering brought to you by Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. This is a place where we invite experienced mindfulness instructors to speak with us about what mindfulness means to them and to discuss as a community how we can incorporate these practices into our daily lives. I'm Suzanne Rowe Palacino. I'm so happy to be here together with Tara Healy on Thursday. Uh, so happy to be here with uh, Tara, founder and director of Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare's Mindfulness Program. Good morning, Tara. Good morning, Suzanne, and I am delighted to be here as well. You know, it's funny, I feel like I haven't been here in a while because last week was Thanksgiving, um, which yeah. of course we didn't um, have class or didn't have the session. So I'm, you know, especially delighted to be here with everyone. So welcome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it does seem like a little while. So It does. Well, happy to all be together this morning as we round out the week um, with our mindfulness sessions. Um, today, we'll start off with a question as we always do. And uh, then Tara will lead us in a meditation practice. It will be a mixture of guided practice as well as some silent time. And after that, we'll have time for questions. So if you go to the bottom of your Zoom screen, open up the chat. And when you do that, you could click on the blue drop down menu that says uh, hosts and panelists and change that to everyone. And then folks will see your comments as you share them. All right, so now that we've got a quorum, let us uh, get started. So what kind yeah. of question do you have this morning for us, Tara? Well, thank you, Suzanne. Thank you for that just warm greeting. Um, mm -hmm. So as I was thinking about the question, um, I had a few ideas in mind, but the one that has come to me is what teacher, past or present, has most influenced you? Uh, and you might have a couple, that's fine to put more than one, but what teacher or teachers, past or present, have most influenced you? And I would also say, think really broadly about teacher. Um, yeah. And well, Suzanne, we could start with you. Well, folks are thinking and, you know, go ahead and start populating the chat. Yeah, I, I think of two. I'm going to type this in the chat so everybody has that. Um, one in particular is a meditation teacher named Tawari Salah, who I just saw last night lead a, a talk um, on Zoom. And she's always been a favorite of mine. She's from Seattle and she um, just has a very straightforward way of teaching. Um, so I really appreciate her. And um, my mother, I have to uh -huh. say my mother and just how she wasn't the type of person that would be teaching in a way that you would think about that it was teaching. It was just... Yeah. Um, her values and, you know, what she believed in um, that I always appreciate and, and always remember fondly. So. Oh, wow. How nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. How about you, Tara? Yeah. So, well, it's funny, you know, the very first person that came to me was my freshman year in high school theology teacher, and his name was Timothy Walls. And he was just just an amazing person, you know, just the thing that stood out about him was his kindness and his, his uh, empathy that it felt so palpable to me. Um, and just really wise. I always remember, I always remember him and that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, but the yeah. other person is Joseph Goldstein. Um, he's really, I always consider him to be my very first teacher. It was his book that I picked up in 1987 and read and felt like I was reading something that was profound and true. And um, yeah, and since then, you know, have sat many retreats with him and have had opportunities to learn directly from him. And uh, so he's uh, he's in the mix there, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. What an amazing teacher to yeah to have a connection with. Yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, I'd love to see what, what's yeah. coming in. <clears throat> Literature teacher. Oh, I I agree. There's you know, there's oh. Some teachers, especially literature, yeah. that really bring you into reading in a way. Yeah, that, that's great. Yeah. Father and stepmom, faith and values. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mom and my girls. Uh. My parents and their love. My daughter. My deceased birth mom, who was only with us for until a young age, but big. Oh, wow. My parents and my first music teacher. Oh. Wow, you had that music teacher for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Nice, Kelly. Wow. Coworker towards the end of your career helped me keep perspective and a sense of humor. Mm. Oh. Negotiation professor taught about huh. listening. And ah, interesting too. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yes. Ah. Crime and punishment uh, author. Wow. My science teacher. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting too, right? How we remember teachers from long ago, from, you know, grammar school, middle school, high school, you know, there, there are those special people that influenced us that here's another English teacher that, you know, Mr. Walls popped into my head right away when I thought of the question. You know, this um I wonder about him and where he might be. But yeah. Um yeah. Now that's um it's so interesting what Susan's mentioned too, is is just that connection of the person who really, you know, that just felt like you were really heard, you know. Right. And, knew what you needed so that that's a big deal especially yeah. when you're in high school <laughs> yeah yeah I mean um, the capacity to really listen well to listen to another human being is an enormous gift I always feel like it's kind of an act of love really you know to um because uh most of us would rather be understood than even agreed with right <laughs> Most of us would rather be understood than agreed with. It's yes. um, it's an incredible, incredible gift that I think, you know, many of these teachers were mentioning had some version of feeling understood and seen, you know, as a as a fellow human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Yep. And it, it that's interesting as we find a little bit of divisiveness in the world, but there's really such an opportunity just to understand. It doesn't, I, I think we think, do we have to enjoy conversation because we're agreeing with people or that we feel like, like-minded? Yeah. It's not always the case. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Oh gosh. It's remind, I came across a really good quote by Adam Grant. I'm going to find it. I'm going to, we'll close with it. I, I think I have it right here close, <laughs> okay. um, but it is very much related to this. And with, I think Suzanne, the divisiveness in the world right now, like it's not about agreement, but what would it mean to let someone know that you're getting it <laughs> from their perspective, from the way they see things, not agreeing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. All right. I think with Love that, we can go ahead and um, move into practice. So. Sounds good. Um, go ahead and just situate yourself in a way that feels like it's going to be most supportive and always standing is an option. So, you know, if you feel like doing a standing practice, go right ahead. One is not better than the other. What really is important is the quality of awareness that you're able to bring to your body, to your mind, to your thoughts. Um, so go ahead and just, you know, assume a posture, settle in. And see if you can surrender your weight into the support of the earth. You know, really feel the support below you. And maintain that upright engaged spine so that you're straight but not stiff. So engaged, upright. And letting go of all that has already happened today, which could have been quite a lot. <laughs> 
and release anticipation of what's to come. Just allow yourself to arrive, mind and body fully present in this moment, feeling the points of contact with the back of the body and the surface, you know, really noticing those points of contact, what it actually feels like from the inside. And take a moment to include sound that might be in the room or outside of the room. The sound will often come and go, arise and pass. <clears throat> Not a problem, just simply aware of sound. And allowing the uh, rising and passing of sound in the background, begin to bring awareness back inward to the body and let's find an anchor for the wandering mind, not trying to stop thought, but just deciding when a thought has slipped in unnoticed and becomes noticed, not a problem. Soft mental note, thinking, allow the body to soften and return to whatever you're gonna use to help stabilize and steady the mind. It's sort of like weightlifting for the mind. We're just doing these repetitions of seeing thought, releasing, softening, returning to your anchor. So it could be breath sensation, really anywhere within the structure of the body that you notice it. And so as you inhale and exhale, is there maybe a broad feeling of the sensations of inhaling and exhaling or a more narrow focus? If breath is challenging, you can go ahead and use something else. You could take the palms of your hands and rest them on the top of the thighs. And the feeling of that point of contact or any other point of contact that is uh, easy for you to connect to. And finally, you can use sound. So if you have sound in the background that's consistent, um, you could let your attention, your sense of awareness, track the sound. And each time a thought slips in and you see it, just simply make a soft mental note thinking, soften the body and return again to sound or body sensation. So I'm gonna be quiet for the next several minutes.
And noticing where the mind is. Gently releasing the narrative, memory or planning, worry, joy, just letting that go, dropping that, releasing, softening the body and returning again to whatever you're using to help stabilize and anchor attention. And again, noticing where the mind is, softening the body and returning to your anchor.
And as we bring this meditation to a close, may we be peaceful and at ease. May our heart be soft and open. May we be safe and protected and our bodies healthy and strong. And may whatever benefit comes of this practice be for the benefit of all beings. <clears throat> and if your eyes were closed, you can take a moment to open the eyes and uh, just look around, sort of reorient to the space that you're in. Thank you so much, Tara. Of course, yeah. So I um, I wanted to just read this quote I mentioned by Adam Grant uh, that I really love. Um, and he says, the best way to open, open people's minds isn't to argue with them, it's to listen to them. Feels pretty intuitive. He goes on to say, when people feel understood, they become less defensive and more reflective and develop less extreme and more nuanced views. And then he ends with, productive disagreements begin with curiosity, not persuasion. I love that last part, especially, right? Yes. With curiosity, not persuasion. And in a way, like the person gets to be heard in a different way. They hear themselves through another person, if you're listening, you know, well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, he's very good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I haven't read any of his books. I've certainly known, you know, he's a management guru and coach, mm -hmm. executive coach. Um, but I I know people really love him. And then I came across that quote and I thought, oh, that is good. That's, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot more that we have in common than we have, um, in, you know, differences. So right. For sure. It is really true. If, if someone was to have somewhat extreme views if they're if they're speaking them they might find that they're speaking them in a less extreme way if you're really listening you know like yeah it could it could be mm -hmm. I mean he's also saying um that if when somebody feels understood it tends to help them be more reflective yeah because they're getting to hear themselves in a through someone else, which might cause them to go, "Huh, is that really what I think?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, is that really how I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So interesting. Yeah, yeah. So please feel free. You know, anybody. Um, you can. You know, obviously jump off at any time. But we have a couple minutes if you have comments or questions, or should you want to share a resource that you've come across recently, a book or an app or, you know, a link that you want to share? <clears throat> yeah. And if not, that's okay too. Yeah. 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 I have this calendar that I've really liked um, that a friend gave to me. It's um, it's a page a day, but it has um, oh. different quotes. Oh yeah, um, yeah, from meditation oriented folks. Um, so it just this is something I've really enjoyed. Nice having every day yeah so that's something that I yeah it's nice to have those little mini inspirations mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah well thank you so much Tara yeah. for leading us in our in our practice this morning and for bringing up that question which is always um nice to remind ourselves of our our loved ones in our past or you know present yeah. teachers so Thank you so much for being here and uh, thank you to the group and yeah, thank for, you everybody for being together today. It's been nice to practice with you and we'll be back here on Tuesday. Um, 
with another teacher and I don't remember who it is, but we'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, wishing everyone a good weekend and good end to the week. And we'll see you soon. Yep. Take care. Bye. Bye.